Well, what a year for Suzuki globally. Uh, Juan Mir taking the 2020 MotoGP title uh, in a really, let's be honest, a really tough year. Also, Suzuki's celebrating its 100th anniversary, so it's got a bit to talk about. So what it's done is brought out its new GSX-R in Alex Rins X-Star livery. You can get the 600, the 750, and the 1000. And we're lucky enough today to have the 750 and the 1000, so we're gonna get them out on the road and see if they're any good. Iconic Suzuki GSX-R series was introduced in 1985 with the debut of the GSX-R 750F. That bike sent Aussie bike buyers into showrooms like determined rats up a rope. It was light, wild to look at and pretty damn competent. It set the scene for the GSX-R designation for years to come. It changed Suzuki as a company for the better. Fast forward to 2001 when the big GSX-R1000 boldly announced itself. It immediately took the mantle of king of the Suzuki Jigsaw lineup. Present day, as we said, the new GSX-Rs are all about Suzuki celebrating 100 years in the business. Indeed, the flagship superbike in the Suzuki lineup has undergone a bit of a facelift to one of the Suzuki Grand Prix racing motorcycles of the 60s. And of course, the current Suzuki X-Star GSX RR MotoGP race bike. The GSX R1000R uses GP Tech for its variable valve timing system to arrive at pretty prodigious power numbers of 140 kilowatts at 13,200 RPM and 117 Newton meters at 10,800 RPM. It boasts some flash electronic gear, which includes 10 traction control modes, a quick shifter and auto blipper, launch control, and lean sensitive ABS. Meanwhile, the GSX-R 750 is powered by a 750cc inline four cylinder liquid cooled donk. No surprises there. With fully adjustable 41 millimeter Showa BPF forks, a fully adjustable Showa shock, and Brembo four piston calipers. Now, I have loved the three-quarter litre capacity since I could climb on a sports bike, and that continues here. When I was a young horsepower hound, 750 cc's was all we wanted, and indeed saved up for. Yep, the fast person in just about everyone's suburb was on a 750. They got the girls and the boys too. The 1000 is faster on our ride that was shown immediately, and it's far more sophisticated than the 750. The leader bike rightfully rules the roost at Suzuki HQ, but that 750 is lovely at the bars for mine. There's a lightness and flickability about the 750 that I love. Of course the 1000 will be the likely sales winner, in fact it's been snapped up. But I'm a bit romantic about a GSX-R 750 still being in the lineup. Get your skates on if you want this one though. The 100th anniversary limited edition GSX-R 1000 will be limited to 30 units and bad news for us down here in the colonies, they're all gone for $26,990 right away. But don't despair because the 100th anniversary limited edition GSX-R750 itself limited to 50 units and priced at $17,490 right away might still be in your local dealer's showroom. There's also a 100th anniversary limited edition GSX-R600. That one's limited to 10 units and you'll pay 16,490 right away. Oh, and well done Suzuki, 100 years. Here's to 100 more. So what a great day aboard the X-Star Suzuki GSX-R1000 and 750. The serious hero sports tackle from Suzuki. The year they took the MotoGP championship and their 100th anniversary. So something to talk about. Great to have a ride.